As winter begins to turn to spring, it's also the beginning of another kind of season, tax season. As residents across the county begin to work on their income tax returns, we'll talk about a Johnson County program that helps you complete your income taxes, along with a little bit of information about property tax relief programs too. On this episode, we'll welcome some guests who can talk all about getting help with taxes in Johnson County. Whether you live in or just love Johnson County, Kansas, JoCo On The Go has everything Johnson County. Here's what's happening and what's coming up in the community you call home. Thanks for joining us for JoCo On The Go. I'm your host, Andy Hyland, and I'm a Johnson County resident, and I work here in Johnson County government in the Office of Public Affairs, and we are here to talk taxes, and we're gonna start now with how to help get some help with income taxes. And so our first two guests are here to talk about the VITA program through Kansas State Research and Extension. It provides free basic tax return preparation to people who qualify for the service. And Joy Miller, first up, is an extension agent with K-State Research and Extension. Joy, can you tell us a little bit about your role as a family and community wellness agent? Yes, so as a family and community wellness, um, extension agent. I focus on um, well-being aspects um, like personal finance, so that's where the income taxes come in, and we also provide services um, through the Senior Health Insurance Counseling for Kansans, um, which help people with their Medicare process or their annual um, drug comparisons online, um, and then also do some programming around um, adults and the aging population. So just cover a a plethora of programs um, to meet our community's needs. Fantastic. And also joining us is Susie Mize, uh, Volunteer VITA Site Coordinator. So welcome, Susie. And can you tell us a little bit about your role and how you contribute to the program? Thank you. Yes, as the site coordinator, my responsibility is the oversight of the uh, of the entire site. So I'm responsible for making sure we have the supplies we need, the volunteers that we need, make sure our volunteers are certified the way they need to be and um, that the site runs smoothly. Um, our site's been here for, a bit, well, we've been at this at this location for five years, but uh, we've been in Johnson County for 14 years. So thank you, Susie. We'll get back to you soon, but uh, Joy, I'd like to start with you. So let's start with a little bit about a basic description about what K-State Research and Extension is. Now, I know many are familiar with it, but some listeners may not be. So tell us a little bit about it. All right. K-State Research and Extension is part of the Land Grant University um, through K-State. We extend the research and the knowledge and programs from the university level out to each individual um, community or county in the state of Kansas. So we provide services um, that cover many areas from community vitality to horticulture and agriculture um, to family and consumer science topics. So we cover a large range of information and topics. We do educational programs um, to help serve our community's needs. Great. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about the VITA program in general, the program we're here to talk about to give people help with their taxes. Uh, what is that and how long has it been around? Okay. VITA stands for Volunteer Income Tax Assistance. It um, started in 1971. It has been in Johnson County for 14, 14 years. Um, we work in partnership with El Centro and the Kansas City Metropolitan Tax Coalition. Um, And the basic program is to help um, people save money on tax preparation costs, um, find deductions they may have overlooked if they um, did it themselves, um, and to help them catch up on previous um, years of unfiled tax returns. And I would say the other piece is um, identity theft, those who don't need to file tax returns, but maybe file for homestead taxes, um, we can complete that filing process to prevent um, tax fraud. That sounds a little bit like, to me, a little bit like H&R Block for free, in, in a way. And, and in so, some ways it is. 
Yeah, that's great. So uh, what kind of impact uh, does that have on our community to have a program like that? Um, so the, the initial impact is just saving money on tax preparation costs. And so in 2022, um, we saved over $280,000 worth of costs um, just to have your taxes prepared. And those that's great. And um, last year they filed a little over a thousand um, tax returns. So they do the federal and the state um, piece with that. And then um, we do also keep track of the average amount of refunds um, those people receive. And that was over $1.2 million. So we're trying to put the largest amount of refund back into our citizens' pockets and save them those tax preparation costs. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So, uh, Joy, I want to bring in Susie now. And so, Susie, you're a volunteer VITA site coordinator. Uh, so uh, I want to ask you a little bit about the eligibility for this program. Who is eligible to receive this kind of assistance? The income limit for the household is $60,000. Um, I will say, however, the average that we do is probably more like $25,000. Mm -hmm. We deal with low to moderate income, uh, simple returns. Um, but anybody who doesn't have a complicated return, and by that I mean a business that lost money or something along those lines, somebody that has W-2s, 1099s, and that sort of thing that's a simple return and is under that $60,000 limit is eligible um, to come to us. We're a bilingual site, so we offer Spanish as well as English. Um, so we, and we serve that, we serve a lot in the Spanish community, and we also serve a lot in the uh, deaf community because we're in a lake, obviously. So we get a lot of the deaf community in here too. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and so do you do both state and federal returns? Yes, and we can do any state. If somebody moved to, somebody works in Kansas City, Missouri, for example, and lives in Johnson County, we can do Kansas and Missouri, or if they moved here from California, we can do California and Kansas. It's for Johnson County residents primarily or, or exclusively? Well, that's or? where we're located, but we yeah. don't limit it to that. And that's where the majority of ours come from. There's a, there's a site in Wyoming, there are two or three sites in Wyandotte County and several in Kansas City, Missouri and around the metropolitan area. So the majority of our of our clients do come from Johnson County. That makes sense. So uh, how do people take advantage well, of- in Johnson County. Oh yeah, I'm sure, sure. So how do people take advantage of the service if they want to- to get a little bit of help, uh, where well, do they need here. to where do they need to go and when? We are here, and by here I mean the Sunset Office Building where K State Extension is located. We're here Wednesdays and Thursdays from ten to four, and Saturdays from eight thirty to twelve thirty. We don't take appointments, so it's walk ins, uh, or we also have a secured lockbox if they would rather drop their documents off, mm -hmm. have us prepare them, and then come back and pick them up, which is actually offered through. K State Extension's office, which is here 8:30 to 5 Monday through Friday for drop-offs. Great. Do you, do you have to add? Our partnership, our partnership with K State Extension gets us this great opportunity to use their building in the Johnson County building. And then El Centro also provides us with Spanish if we need it also, but also with some supplies. Um, so our partnerships with those two have made a big difference in our program. Fantastic. Do you have the address for that building? Uh, for 11811. South Sunset Drive, Olathe. So it's at the northwest corner of 119th and Ridgeview. Fantastic, fantastic. So, I would also go like ahead, go mention, ahead. Um, we do have packets at the Sunset Drive office building um, and on our website, which is johnson.k-state.edu. So they can um, either pick up a packet or print one off from the website and they can see exactly what the requirements are, what they need to complete, and what they need to submit um, with that and drop off or walk in so that they're well prepared um, to have that completed. Fantastic. And, and how long will you offer the service? When do you, when do you? Until roll April 15th. April 15th. That's right. That's right. Very good. And so, you know, I know reliability, reliability and trust is important when you're offering people help with income taxes. What kind of training or experience is required for the volunteers to participate in the program? IRS provides the training and requires the training. Every year we have to recertify. Uh, there are several different levels of recertification depending on what level of, of volunteerism you're doing. 
Um, for, for example, we have some that just provide the greeters that have help the people when they come in, provide them with the number and don't actually prepare, which is a different certification level than somebody who prepares a tax return or somebody that quality reviews it. IRS requires that we, after we prepare it, it has to be quality reviewed by, by a second party to catch any errors and that sort of thing. So um, depending on what your particular position is, the certification is, re is required every single year. Fantastic. It, it seems like there's a lot of residents who qualify for this kind of help. And you gave some of the numbers before uh, of the residents that you've served and the, the people who've come through the program. But this yes. is really for both of you. What kind of comments do you hear from people who take advantage of this service? Most are extremely appreciative. A lot of people are very, in, very intimidated by doing income taxes and by the word, by the letters IRS. Um, and so we get a lot of elderly, um, you know, who are especially people who are widowed or widower and the other party was the one that always did the taxes. Um, they're very intimidated by um, just the fact that they have to do just the fact they have to do income taxes, but uh, very, very, they're, most of them are very much appreciative of what we do and come back year after year after year. That's great. That's great. Uh, anything to add there, Joy, or, or what you hear from folks who take advantage no, of it? No, they just comment. It's a great service. Um, we're grateful it's here. Um, and for some, it's just, um, it can be like a second opinion. Um, verifying that everything is correct. So they're yeah. not, they get to take all the time they want in answering their questions. Um, and so they're not rushed through the process. Um, and then we do the e-filing for them. Mm. When they leave here, it's already e-filed. And unless it rejects for some reason, they're done until next year. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Uh, well, well, thanks so much to both of you. We really appreciate you coming on and helping to explain a bit about this program. Uh, we're going to switch. You, you bet. You bet. We're going to switch now to property taxes. But like I say, thanks so much for taking the time and to, to be with us and, and explain all of this. You're welcome. Okay. Joining me now is Amy Meeker Berg, who is the Johnson County Clerk and Register of Deeds for Johnson County to talk a little bit about a few programs we have for property tax relief for people who qualify. So welcome, Amy. Hi, Andy, thank you. Glad sure. to be here. Sure, can you tell me first a little bit about your role and what you do for the county? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, Andy, as the county clerk, we're responsible for creating and maintaining our property tax ownership records, calculating the tax roll for real estate tax billing, and also providing um, some mapping for the county. Um, and then the other part of my job is as the Register of Deeds, we record, maintain, and preserve all of those land record documents, so like deeds and mortgages, um, and also including documents such as military discharges and other um, preservation documents that are statutorily required for us to, to record. Fantastic. Uh, and, uh, like I said, uh, today we're trying to talk some property tax relief. So we have three basic property tax relief programs that I'm hopeful you can help us out with. Those are all provided by the state, and we're going to talk a little bit about each one of those. Uh, and so let's talk about uh, the Homestead Property Tax Refund first. So who's sure. eligible for that program, and what, what is it all about? Great question, Andy. Um, for Homestead Property Tax Refund, um, you're eligible if you're a Kansas resident all of 2022 year, for example, who owned and occupied a home. Um, you may be eligible for a refund up to $700 if your total household income was $37,750 or less, and you were 55 years or older, or blind or totally and permanently disabled, had a dependent child who lived with you the entire year under the age of 18, or your disabled veteran, or the surviving spouse of a disabled veteran. That's a lot of, of stuff to keep straight, and I imagine a lot of this is available uh, on your website. Is that right? So the website that's available through jococov.org. So. Yes, you're correct, Andy. It's all available on our website because at this point we have three qualifying programs that um, provide property tax leave, relief to homeowners in Johnson County. And um, it's definitely a lot of information. So make sure you look at those and see which one you best qualify for. Great. And how can somebody apply for that homestead? program if, if they wanted to, to do sure. that. 
That's a great question. So individuals can apply when filing their income tax returns. Um, they can do that through their tax preparer or their financial advisor. Um, those are individuals that can assist with filing. Um, if you're not required um, to file an income tax return, you could file online um, through the state of Kansas's website. It's www.kansas.gov. Um, there's forms available there, or there are forms available in our office, in the county clerk's office, um, in the county administration building. Um, if you would like to, to come and visit us, you're welcome to do so and get a form at the time that you're here. Fantastic. Uh, so let's move now to the second program we wanted to talk about, the Safe Senior Tax Refund. So again, how, who applies for that and, and how is it different than the first? Great question. So um, somewhat similar. Um, Safe Senior is a program for a Kansas resident for all of 2022. You have to have been a Kansas resident who owned and occupied a home. Um, you're eligible for a refund of 75% of your property taxes paid if your total household income is $22,000 or less and you are 65 years or older all of 2022 and you do not have any delinquent property taxes. Wonderful. And how does one uh, apply for that program? Is it the same or similar to the last one too? Yes, it is. You're correct. Any individual can apply when filing their income tax return. Um, it's always best to talk to a tax preparer or a financial advisor if you need assistance when doing that. Um, if you're not required to file an income tax return, you can find those forms available online um, through the state of Kansas's website or at your local county clerk's office. Wonderful, wonderful. And the third one we wanted to talk about is, I understand, a new one as of uh, the last year. The governor signed House Bill 2239, which essentially provides, as I understand it, a tax freeze by giving a refund for the amount by which the owner's property tax exceeds the level it was at when the claimant became eligible for the program. So can you explain that a little bit for us and, and so translate that into English <laughs> a little <laughs> bit for us? Be happy to. So this is our newest program. It's the um, Senior or Disabled Veteran Property Tax Relief Program program. Um, it's somewhat similar to the others, um, but the eligibility is a little bit different. Um, you would be eligible for a refund of the difference between the current and base year property tax amount um, if your total household income is $50,000 or less. You, As the other programs have to be a Kansas resident who own and occupy a home. Um, there's also other qualifying factors. You need to be 65 years or older all of 2022 or a disabled veteran or a surviving spouse of a disabled veteran as well. That's great, that's great. Um, apply the same sort of way or is it different than the others? Exactly the same. Very good, um, very good. Uh, and so wonderful. And so thank you so much for walking through all of that with us, Amy. Anything else that people ought to know when they're applying for these programs or finding out what, whether they're eligible or how to help them do that? Yes, I think one of the most important things that we run into is making sure you're your appraised value of your home does not exceed $350,000. It has to be that as part of the requirement for any of the property tax relief programs is that your home value is $350,000 or less. Um, so it's very important that that's the first thing you check to make sure that you would qualify for, for one of the property tax relief programs. Wonderful. Well, thanks so much for joining us, Amy. You're welcome. Thank you so much. And thanks again to all of our guests for sharing such good information today. And just to summarize a few items we covered and where to learn more. If you earned less than $60,000 in income last year, check out Johnson County K-State Research and Extension's VITA program. You can get help filing your income taxes for free. And more information is online at johnson.kstate.edu slash home hyphen family slash tax hyphen preparation. Also, be sure you're checking out all of our forms of property tax relief available as well. Look for the property tax relief page at jococov.org on the Treasury, Taxation, and Vehicles page. Thank you. You just heard Joco on the go. Join us next time for more Everything Johnson County. Have a topic you want to discuss? We want to hear from you. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at JocoGov. For more on this podcast, visit jococov.org backslash podcast. Thanks for listening.